Hi guys, um, this notebook sample, we are going to draft pin tucks. We are basically going to draft the little illustration in the book where she's got a bib and on the bib design are pin tucks. She also has ruffles around the bib. We are not gonna draft that for this project and we're not gonna do the sleeves either, but we'll leave that dart at her waist and um, give her a bib with some pin tucks. So here we go. Um, so figure one, we're gonna pattern plot and manipulation. Um, so we need our one dart um, sloper to do this. Um, and they want us to go ahead and draw our bib style line. They don't really tell us how to draw it. It's kind of, I guess, up to you. It's just, where, it's a style line. It's, I don't know, you're the pattern maker, you decide. You kind of want to mimic the illustration. So to me, it looks like it's mid-shoulder and then it's above the dart as well. And we can use our curved ruler if we'd like to. Let's see. Um, okay. But there's not really a right or wrong answer. Whatever you think looks the best. I think I want more curve. I don't like my curve. And that's just subjective. You don't have to copy me. If you like the first curve, do your first curve. Okay, cool. Now they want us to cut it from paper and separate our patterns. Now they want us to cut and separate the patterns. Okay, the final step of figure one wants us to draw lines um, that really signify where our pin tucks will be after they're sewn up. Um, it's important to note that this garment will be cut on the fold, so it'll be a mirror image. And if you read it, it says, draw our first line a 16th inch in from our center front, which would equal a 1 8 inch space on the fold. So the first pin tuck, I guess the pin tuck in the center is going to be an eighth inch apart. And then it says draw additional ones a quarter inch apart. So I don't know why they want the center front one closer together than all the other ones. That's a little odd to me, and it doesn't really match their illustration either. And their illustration, they all look evenly apart. So I'd love thoughts from you. Do you guys have any idea why they do? Um, for the pin tucks, we are not going to worry about half scale. We're going to do actual size pin tucks because pin tucks are pretty teeny and I don't even want to see you guys struggle trying to sew up a half scale pin tuck. So we'll just follow their measurements. Um, and I guess for fun, I'll follow the book, but I do have my reservations of why the center front one is smaller than all the others. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that's 1 16th inch from my center front. Great. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this box is one eighth inch. So I'm going halfway through the box. Great. Okay, that's one sixteenth inch away from my center front. Now for the next one, I'm gonna draw them all a quarter inch apart.
Okay, there we are. Okay, figure two says to draw four sets of parallel lines. Um, each set is 1 8 inch wide, which is going to be for our tuck intake, and they're going to be spaced 1 4th inch apart. Um, draw our first tuck line approximately 6 inches from the paper's edge. This will allow room to cut on the fold. Um, okie dokie. Okay. Um, sure. So about six inches from the edge of my paper. I'll just kind of mark where the heck that is. Okay. Oops, a little messy there. Don't need that there. Uh, okay, so it wants me to start drawing my pin tucks about here. Now, one thing I'm noticing, I don't know if you're noticed, but it sure looks like the sketches in the book are a bit out of scale. Because um, after I finished number one, I have a lot more lines than they do. And I didn't do half scale either. So you would think on the half scale, I, I would have many less, or a few less than their illustration. Because um, they only have one, two, three, four, five lines. I have a lot more than five. I don't know, it's kind of weird, something to think about. And I'm noticing as well in figure two, it looks like the space, they're asking for the dart intake to be an eighth of an inch, which is half as wide as a fourth of an inch. But in their illustration, it doesn't look like the spacing is double, whatever. Anyways, it looks like the illustration is not quite to scale. So let's just continue with the wording and see what happens instead of matching the picture. Okay, so I marked my line, that's about six inches away. Um, I guess since we are half scale, I could have marked it three inches, but I can always cut my paper later if it's a big deal. <coughs> okay, so an inch, one eighth inch wide. I guess we'll go this way. Now, one fourth inch space. Okay, so they want four of these little guys. So I just did one. Let's do another one that's only one eighth inch wide. One fourth inch space. Okay, we got two halfway there. One eighth inch wide. One fourth inch space. And last one, one eighth inch wide. So I'm going to kind of color in the ones that are 1 8 inch wide, the little tucks, just sort of like the book has it. 1 4 inch space. There's my 1 8 inch tuck. one fourth inch space. 1 8 inch tuck. one fourth inch space and 1 8 inch tuck. Okay, that completes figure two. For figures three and four, they want us to fold the paper for each tuck, and then we're gonna place our bib guidelines on those folded tucks and trace it. Um, so they don't really say this, but looking at the illustration, they do want us to fold this paper so we can unfold it, and I believe they want us to fold it so that the first tuck is 1 16th inch away from the fold. So I'm just going to mark 1 16th inch. And that's going to be my fold line, my first fold. Okay. Uh, a little bit off. Now they want us to fold each of the tucks. Okay. 
little tricky on the double paper, but I think we can do it. What I'll do is I'll fold this, crease this line. Okay. I'm gonna bring that crease line up to the solid line. Okay. Great. It might be in my best interest to get a little tape to assist me in holding it. Yeah. Let's see how it holds up. Okay, that's one. Let me try the other one. I'm gonna crease it first. I seem to have the best luck with that method. Crease the outer line. I'm gonna kind of bring that guy up to the other solid line. Oh, it's so teeny. Good thing we didn't do half scale, right? That would be impossible. <laughs> Just a teeny little pin tuck. I'd love to show you guys how to do this on the computer. <laughs> it's a little quicker, but it's gratifying this way as well. Okay, number three. And the last guy. Okay, seem to be all folded, great. Take our guide, line him up, and look at that, our lines are matching. Great, and they want us to trace it. As you can see, it's out of proportion from the sketch. They only have four and it's fitting their whole bib and they said a quarter inch. I, I don't know, let me know if you guys know. Is it a mistake on the book or are we missing something? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, okay, great, so we traced it. Now the last final step is to cut it and unfold it. And that's basically it, okay. Here we go. you notice, I'll put some blue paper beneath it. Do you see how the edges aren't smooth, but when they're folded, they are smooth? So it's that edge on purpose, that shape on purpose. <clears throat> okay, so these are our two pattern pieces now. We just need to go ahead and label them and go ahead and run a test fit.
to sew up the pin tucks, um, I think it'll be helpful if you put a little mark where the pin tucks are um, so you know where to sew them. Uh, if you look online, there's some tutorials um, if you have a pin tuck foot, which makes it look really easy to sew up. You just need a double needle in that special foot. I unfortunately do not have that in my classroom today, so I'll just sew them up manually. Um, so pin tuck, it's kind of like having the seam allowance on the outside of the garment. Um, so instead of folding right sides together, I actually fold wrong sides together, and then I sew it closed. So you'll see your thread, so your, usually your thread color matters, and that seam allowance becomes like decorative. So here's my first set. So I'm gonna take these two little notch lines, and I try to match them up. And then what I would do is I'm gonna sew straight down here to connect to that one. And when I sew it, I should be catching the little notches on the other side, just straight down. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so I just sewed straight down from those notches here and on the back should be the other little pair of notches. Of course, I use white threads. So it might be a little hard to see. Um, but then I would just open it up and look, there's my decorative, adorable little pin tuck. Isn't he cute? So I keep doing it so that I have a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold the next one together. Again, matching those notches as best I can and the fold kind of goes oops, in between those two notches. I'm zoomed in pretty tight here. Try zooming out. There we go. Oh boy. It's so little. I should really invest in one of those pin tuck feet, I'm thinking right now. Probably aren't very expensive. Okay. There we are. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew straight to connect those two little notches. Okay, I just sewed the second little row. You can see my white stitches. I'm gonna open it up and look at that, I have two pin tucks. So I can iron them to one side if I want, let them stick up. Um, yeah, but I got some work to do. I still have to sew the rest of my little pin tucks. I just finished sewing my pin tuck rows. There it is, now I just need to go ahead and press it and iron it so that I can decide, do I want them all to face towards the center? Do I want them all to face away from the center? Maybe all the same way? I don't know, I guess I can decide. Um, yeah. Um, I just want to show you when I sewed my dart together I made sure my notches lined up and then that little hole I punctured is on the fold right there and then when I sewed it I actually pulled my I did a couple stitches and then I pulled the thread to go past that little hole that was punctured um, because I purposely punctured the hole um, about half an inch below the point of the dart point so I sewed half an inch past that and I sewed straight just by holding my thread right here. Um, I can see my thread looks like got, I sewed right on it for a little bit. That's okay, I can just cut it so it's off. And I just use that as like a guide to sew straight. And then when I was done, I got as close as I could to the fold as possible. And instead of back stitching, I just hand tied a knot to avoid like any kind of weird pucker. And yeah, that's how I do my darts. And then of course I'll take it over to get pressed. Okay, so I need to sew my bib to my bodice. Um, we always sew right sides together. This is gonna be really important to stay on the sew line. If you're having any trouble, um, we might even have to maybe put in a couple snips here to help open it, but I actually think we'll be okay. Sometimes this helps kind of open it to help you get it all the way around. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay guys, and there is the finished piece sewn up. Um, don't look too closely though. <laughs> 
You might notice that I feel like her bib is a little crooked compared to her darts, and that might be from poor sewing around the bib because I didn't mark the sew line on both sides and they went a little fast. So now I'm paying the price. Um, so anyways, if yours doesn't turn out perfect, that's okay too. We're really just trying to focus on the pin text, but, um, but as a warning, um, you want to make sure you know where your sew lines are when you go around the bib, otherwise else it might turn out a little crooked. Um, yeah, that's it.